Saya Sakakibara is about to live out her dream where she travels to Tokyo to compete in her first Olympic Games. I sat down with Saya to find out where it all began and when she first fell in love with BMX racing. Saya, talk to me about where it all started. How did BMX become part of your life? BMX was how I started BMX was heavily influenced by my brother Kai so he's three years older than me and so I have to kind of talk about like my life story to kind of explain <laughs> how I started BMX but I was born on the Gold Coast in Talabadra and at the time my brother he loved riding his bike he just he just loved you know skidding down his hill racing my mum to like the shops of the car and he was so competitive and when they came across a BMX track, BMX just ticked all his boxes, competitive, um, action packed, jumps, going fast, <laughs> bikes, he was like love at first sight. So he started BMX uh, when he was about three or four years old and then backtrack, my mum is Japanese and my dad is English and they were both living in Australia, but their visas ran out when I was two years old. So then we had to move all the way to Japan. So when I moved to Japan, um, my parents obviously saw how Kai loved BMX and how much, how, how much he was passionate about it. So they continued it in Japan. And um, when I was about four years old, my parents bought me my first bike. Um, it was a little GT, it was <laughs> yellow, it was second hand and uh, they kind of pushed me into the sport. I gotta be honest, I didn't like it at the start. I, I was like, why am I doing this? And my first race, I crashed three times on the same jump, cried, went home, <laughs> didn't touch my bike for two months. What does your mixed heritage have uh, and how does it have an impact on your life? You know, you've you sort of lived in two countries, you've got 50% Australian, you've got Australian, English, uh, Japanese, how does yeah. that impact you? I think uh, for me it's a lot to do with Australian in J and Japan because I've lived in both. Unfortunately I don't have a very strong tie to England but when I go to Japan I say I'm going back to Japan <laughs> and I love the food there, I love the culture and I still have a lot of strong ties or I still carry a lot of Japanese values in my day to day life. I'm so fortunate enough that I have a platform within you know, social media as well that I can connect to Japanese audiences, I can keep in touch with my old friends in Japan as well so it's just been absolutely amazing and I, I definitely feel Australian but very Japanese at the same time and it's just been really amazing. So when you were seven or eight you were saying that you didn't really, you know, you sort of had a love-hate with BMX, so what point in your life did you think, I love BMX, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? I think, I think the, very big, the very big moment was when I turned into Junior Elite, which is 17 to 18 class. And when you turn into junior elite, that's when it kind of gets serious. Mm -hmm. Your points add up for Olympic qualification and things like that. It, it starts getting quite professional. And I, at the time, have been winning within Australia. And you know, I knew I was like kind of fast, <laughs> but when I was racing the 18 year olds and I won that first season, I was like, oh, maybe I am pretty good. You know, <laughs> maybe I can back myself and uh, maybe I can see myself doing this like for a full-time living and I think that was that was a key moment where it, it clicked and then that was when we had like media and interviews as well and who were taking you know kind of interest in what I was doing how I was feeling and things like that that comes with being an athlete and I was like maybe maybe this is good maybe this is what I can do and um, this is where this is what I'm supposed to be doing right now, so I think that was a key moment. 